Eastern Standard Time, but I was in Wisconsin, so I was on Central Time, baby. Oh yeah, you had time. Good for you. It is. I keep going home. last minute. I, I and I don't understand. I'm not a last minute kind of person. I'm the person who has. I'm their glad, taxes you, I'm glad done. you mentioned that. <laughs> I'm the person who has their taxes done in February. So I don't <laughs> know what the fuck happened? I just was not trying to do that shit. Mm. It happens right. to the best of us. It, it and it happened to me, and I am the best of us. <laughs> literally the best of us i don't know what it is but i just love being black bj here what up doe it's your girl blair you know my melanin was popping yesterday it's popping today and it's sure enough gonna be popping tomorrow it's your boy red and you're listening to the highly melanated podcast I saw it in the, in the supermarket. I was all like, I guess I'll have some. My sister hates watermelon. Mm. You got to take her black card. No, she's like, I don't care. She was like, I don't. She's like, watermelon is disgusting. It's like, mostly it. water. Like what? She hates water? I think I think for her, it like has like, for whatever reason, it has this taste. And like, she was trying to describe it to me. And I was like, OK, I can see that. It tastes like flesh. All right, so this isn't as close, but this is close mm. enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I said. I didn't, sorry, I didn't get the memo. Um, I last last thing, Nigga, we're we're get, we have seven minutes, minutes. remaining. <laughs> <laughs> but as you say that, I literally just finished my watermelon. <laughs> wow. Come on. And not all of us dress like watermelon crush, though. <laughs> Come on for being on the same page, Mike. Thank you, I am. Wait, lastly, so funny because I I can't find it. I am literally eating a high chew that's watermelon flavor. <laughs> <laughs> you are overdoing it. What's going on with you today? No, you, the universe is overdoing it. We're on the same page. I love it. All right, so we're just gonna get started. Okay. Um, but no, for real. Where is your mic? Mine? To your mouth. Move it's right closer. here. Move it's right here. It's right here. It's not, you don't, oh, because your apartment is still kind of empty. So, yeah, but still, hmm. Mm-hmm. We can, I mean, we can, we can possibly address that. Maybe put the mic like in front of you. I know it'll block like your, our view of my mouth. Mic. Yeah. Take the pop filter off. Said, put it in your mouth. It's not even the pop filter is not even over it like that. In your mouth, it's motherfucking in your mouth. mouth. <laughs> you can eat. What you choose to lick? What's in your dick? Because I taste like watermelon. watermelon. What do you choose to lick? Pussy a dick. People around the world, it's your pick. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys! Welcome back to another episode of Highly Melanated Podcast. The safe space where it is okay <laughs> to choose what you want to lick, <laughs> to put it in your mouth. Wow. I said your motherfucking mouth. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I might just leave all of that shit in there. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I feel like you probably you should. Might, you might as well. PJ is excited about the brighter days that are up ahead. Red, I'm going to sign on to that. I like the sound of that. Blair, ditto. We all going to agree? We all going to wear the same color shirts? 
apparently we all we all are on the same accord today so that's all right (laughs) all right and as always guys you can follow us on social media that we are part of such as instagram and tiktok we are still looking for people who want to actually help out with that that is highly (laughs) melanated podcast you can always email us uh because we'll check that when, when we see that we have one uh, at uh, highly melanated podcast at gmail.com. We don't need no help with that. We got that. We got that one. <laughs> yeah, that's simple. And if you want to wear a pinkish reddish shirt like the three of us and be all on the same page because the universe was universal today, come on over to Twitter at H underscore melanated pod. H underscore melanated pod. It's the universe that is universing. It's the H underscore melanated uh, pod. Like this is highly melanated after dark or some stuff. What mind, you, going? Uh, mind you, listeners, uh, Red is, uh, if you hear any sound effects, he is sloshing down on some watermelon right That's now. Sloshing. Which, ahead, which, I, which I'm going to put out there again. My sister does not like watermelon. And I said, she does she not like water? Because that's mostly what watermelon is. And you said, what does it taste like? And I said, it tastes so like I, sweet I, water. No, it tastes like flesh. Mm, like flesh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, so. I, I wouldn't know. Oh. <laughs> you mean like human flesh? Not like you bite into a, not like a carnivore or, wait, not, is that a carnivore? No, that's a. Yeah, carnivore. No, no we're carnivores, but like people yes. eat people. Cannibal. 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 There we go. There we go. Look at look at Red being the one who got the words today. <laughs> wasn't alive, it wasn't allowed. No, I don't really agree with. I mean, I agree, but I don't really care too much for watermelon. But I know that watermelon is actually one of the better things to eat because watermelon actually, like tomatoes, produces water in your body. Um, so I know that. I yeah, I gotta. I'm getting older, so shit. <laughs> Sidebar: I was just having a conversation with uh my pharmacist when i went to pick up some like i drink these, these bitters you sound like such an old man i was having a conversation with my pharmacist <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah i was right because you know i walk in and he's like you have hey. conversations with your pharmacist you go you pick up what you got to pick up and you leave i wish i could you know so like ah shut up <laughs> so we, we'll get into that right but i wish i could be more like that but it's just you know i talk to people it's just who i am um and so it was talking about me not going to the doctor this night whatever x y and z and I was saying, you know, I need something. So funny how this is all tying together. I need something to help me, like, get rid of water weight. So, guys, listeners out there, if you have an idea, please let us know. Mind you, all I said just now is eating a lot of watermelon helps you produce water. So <laughs> that's the 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 weird tie about it all. But, yeah. But before we get into it really quick, because, uh, guys, welcome back. We This is part two of our last episode of our um you know, reflection, looking back and looking forward type of vibe we got going on here. Before we get into the question of the week, um, I really wanted to mention you guys actually, um, to you who are who did not listen to the last episode, uh, today is actually recorded the day before, which be, would be the fifth anniversary of us doing this podcast. So by this time this comes out on Thursday, God willing, um <laughs> thank you also for being patient with us because life is life in but y'all be patiently waiting um and we greatly appreciate you but this will be the day after it will be our fifth year anniversary of doing this podcast so yeah happy Ooh. birthday and that's why you heard that that song at the beginning tlc does not get enough credit um and even though that that last album was not like a bop like all the other tlc albums um it did have they, tried. A they gave it the old college try <laughs> they did they did i mean and it it they, it i well i can't even say that because i haven't listened to the album it's, I mean, that song, that song starts, that i know nothing about so yeah that song starts it off it's called it's sunny um and it really bop, bop, bop. i mean it's 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 got all these uh features and our features uh samples in it so but it's a it's really a great song to get you uplifted and just ready for a new day a new year so yeah Nice, nice. I'm glad that you had made that beautiful intro because I don't have a question of the week this week. Okay, so speaking of questions, okay, so if you don't have a question, <laughs> so of the week, let y'all let y'all put it up because I know that y'all always have some questions that y'all want to put out there. I'm just gonna eat my watermelon and just chill. So before we get into question of the week, then okay, so good because I kind of wanted to actually mention this. And okay, hey guys, welcome back. It's PJ. 
about to bring it down right quick, but bring it right back up. So I had, um, as many of you know, I do drive for different funeral homes um, here in the city. And I found out today that the one that I did, shout out to uh, Pressy, the governor, uh, Taylor in Harlem, who just recently passed away. Um, if anybody follows me on TikTok, that's I am PJ Ryan, just like on the same as all social media platforms. And found out that he is Tiana, Tiana Taylor's uncle. Hmm. And not just that, but this man, I it, it brought tears to my eyes. Because when I say that they did the whole horse and carriage thing, rode him all the way up, um, like they did Aaliyah, all the way up um, from 160, 116th in Harlem, all the way up to 137th, down, and then back down to 116th. And when I say the amount of people that, you know, just was in the streets and it's a lot of people screaming i love you you know he's done a lot of great things for the community and i and universally things have been connecting um as far as like having conversations with people as far as people actually doing things for the community as far as what i do as far as what we do and individually and collectively even like with shout out to you red and before we get into the episode we're going to talk about the great thing that i just witnessed that red was a part of when so that's my question of the week um how proud don't believe it <laughs> how proud should we be of red this is the question of the week and the reason why is because he did another reading and he did an amazing job shout out to uh lori um for having lori a sinclair for those of you who needs to find her on on facebook uh she's amazing um he did another one of her reads go ahead talk about it right quick um don't you okay. love being put on the spot no yeah. i know right so like it, this feels great this feels wonderful um so um uh, i was asked by Lori, a dear friend Lori, to um do read a character for her in a play called out of rhythm and it was essentially about um a, a pair a set of twins who grew up very differently due to their circumstances let's just say and um how they dealt with that as they became uh, adults. Um, so it, it, it talked about a, a couple of different things that um, we often don't talk don't talk about in the community. Uh, but it was very good. I, I mean, I, I loved it. I don't want to necessarily give it away because I I want to see Lori develop it. But I was very excited to to be a part of that um, this whole journey and whole process with her. I think this is my second time reading it. So, Aww. yeah. Shout out to Lori. Uh, you don't even know this yet, Lori, but you will be on here as a guest really soon, um, along with a couple of other playwrights. And we're going to talk about um, the creative process of actually, you know, doing a play and things of that nature. So, yeah, mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to have you on. You know, thank you in advance. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank yeah. you in advance. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, to, ring, to round that all out, because I think I just cut off what I was talking about. It was just an amazing experience to be, um, to see where this man has come from, what he has chosen to do with his, with his life as he, after he fell on hard times and had his situation, um, he ended up being a man community, would hand deliver food from the pantry throughout all of Harlem, uh, took a lot of guys in. Um, taught them financial literacy, also did a lot of things when it comes to like basketball in the communities, getting people off the street and actually getting into these basketball leagues. Um, so it was a lot of great things and some more other things, but it was just an amazing feeling to watch that. Um, and I've never met this man, but just to see the, uh, the amount of love that is received from the community brought tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I want to give a very special shout out to the fam to the, to the Taylor family. Um, and just wanted to say thank you for allowing um, me to be in that space, even though I was working. But it they responded on the social media, on TikTok, as well as Instagram. So and it's been like constant DM. So I really want to say thank you to uh, you guys. And that's why I really love doing what I do, no matter what aspect of it is. So, yeah. That's dope. That's really dope. Some days it'd be good. Some days it'd be good. Other days, <laughs> baby, <laughs> there are stories, guys. Hey, look, sto stories are good. 
stories are good. It keeps things interesting. That's you know, it. there's more good days than bad days, though. So I always got to remember that. Mm-hmm. So speaking of more good days than bad days, look at you uh, bringing it all full circle. Um, okay, look, you, I love the way that you are knowing when to do it. Look at you. <laughs> He's actually, uh, for everybody, he is drawing circles around his glasses. <laughs> his like, glasses are circles. <laughs> and squares. <laughs> but um, And lines. Right. So, the, so interesting lines. Oh. oh, 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 okay. So I'm like, nobody's doing coke. Um, Lord Jesus, <laughs> except ta. <laughs> now I grab a belt randomly. Why is there a belt over here? Who is I going to be? Um, anyway, so the last time we left off, we were going to move into the we did that shit part. And I kind of wanted to switch it a little bit after listening to the episode and listening to uh, me ramble all over the place as I'm doing again. Um, I still wanted us to like talk about like the stuff that we have accomplished in a sense, not just five years of doing this podcast, but like in general in our lives in the past five years, but really more so of over overcoming the obstacles that whatever may have come within these past five years, actually patting yourself on the back for getting through that. Without being too personal, and again, guys, this is a personal episode, but I really want us to be able to, especially since we've been doing this for five years, and you guys know us, so um, know as much as we share, but I think that there's a great conversation to be had about growth and seeing how far we've come in general. So, who wants to go first? I mean, okay, so, I mean, I'll go first, being that we had just talked about this this production that I was just a, a part of. Anybody knows me, I'm like the king of like introspection. So I want to be able to constantly peer into myself and see where the growth has happened um, in order, and just in order to you know build, you know build myself up and make myself better. If you don't really know or have an idea of like where you're at, then it's hard to ever really get better um and i saw that that you know this past monday when that um when that happened i I did the play and i felt just i just felt like i was one with the character um and um I, i just think it requires a lot of quiet moments i've been having a lot of quiet moments lately um without any interruption without anybody asking me to you know, be a part or do certain things. I know that's been annoying to certain people, but I think it's just so important to just sit down and just have that conversation with yourself. Don't don't answer back, but, you know, sit there and have that conversation with yourself so that you can kind of develop yourself and figure out what your next moves are. I don't know if that makes sense. I can't hear you. I realize. So... <laughs> <laughs> I was on mute, my bad. <laughs> um, but I, I'm I'm curious though, like, what is really the bad uh, connotation or the stigma of like actually responding to yourself? Am I the only one who like has full on conversations, pretty no, much you, what you if know, conversations back and forth? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think it, it just becomes a thing, like when it's like when you. I feel like when you're when multiple personalities arise i don't know i think that's where that 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 negative connotation comes into play but there's nothing wrong talking out loud and talking amongst yourself and no one's there because you're you're kind of working out whatever issues problems concerns things that you have that are at the top of your mind it's interesting though it's like because I feel like people talk to themselves like all the time like that's normal but how often do people really listen to themselves when they talk yes ah that's that's you know because I feel like in your example right when you were talking about like sometimes we talk through things so that way we can kind of get like to an understanding on it but I feel like we do that best when we're talking to somebody else you know how like sometimes like I, I do this a lot like there might be something that like I'm having an issue or a problem with, or, you know, there, there's some type of like blockage or something. And I don't quite understand what it is, but like, if I 
talk to somebody about the situation and they don't, they don't have to say anything. They're just there as like an ear, like a listening ear. And I'm talking to them and I'm saying this and I literally talk myself into the answer. And then I say to myself, ha, huh, that's what it is. Okay, great. Thanks for listening. Kind of thing. You know, I think that there's the part that knowing that somebody is like actively listening is what helps us get to the conclusion. You know what I mean? And, and I agree with you. Um, I think the only problem with that is that I, what I've realized about myself is that I actually require a lot more stimuli than I would give myself credit for. Um, Cause I talk a lot. Like when I'm, when I'm walking home, which is typically anywhere, depending on where I'm fr walking home from anywhere between 40 minutes to an hour walk. Cause I, I just like walking, but I really just sit down I'm really just walking and just listening to music or listening to a podcast. There is a certain level of engagement, but what I find is that like, if I call a friend or I call my mom or I call my dad or whoever, um, then there's a certain level of, even though I'm venting, I'm still receiving feed feedback and that's not necessarily what I want. And this is what I mean. Like for me, I need those moments of silence where I'm just mm -hmm. like, you know, with myself, because is this what I really want? You know, the influence that, you know, when I, when I vent to my sister and my sister gives me a suggestion as to what I should do, is that really the suggestion that I wanted to utilize? Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're subtly influenced by people that you trust and there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to really ask yourself at some point in time, is that your, is that the true epicenter of your happiness? Mm -hmm. because is that really what you want so you, you can have 10 people suggest things to you but if none of them are the answer then you're still going to be a little on edge like eh, i don't know what the problem is mm -hmm. that's why you talk to yourself and you'll be able to talk to yourself you hear the different views in your mind and then it comes full circle well that's the thing you got to talk to yourself and you have to listen to yourself so in crazy. more ways than one so here's the weird thing right so since we si full circle moment so since we started doing this podcast, what I've been doing is that if there are moments like, let's say I'm washing dishes, and usually when I'm washing dishes, I have thoughts, right? And I'm just because there's no music playing, or there is music playing, but I'll turn the music playing, turn it off, and have these thoughts. But sometimes what I've been doing is putting my voice, my phone on voice recorder, and mm -hmm. outwardly saying what my thoughts are, regardless of whatever they are, you know, I say them, and then I record them, but then I listen to them later, not the same day maybe a week from then. And this is like something similar to like what I was talking about before. And I think we said this at the very beginning of um, in creation about this thing that I got an idea from shout out to Hey Friend Hey from the Friend Zone podcast. Um, the gratitude jar, which is, you know, day by day, you write a little bit thing in there, um, which you show, which you are gra grateful for, and then read it back later. And so reflect on that. So it's like also another part of reflection. Am I at the right mind space when I was thinking this? Did I make sense? Do I sound, how many times do I say, um, like all these little things that, you know, does my thoughts flow quickly? You know, was I right? You know, so I don't think there's something, I don't necessarily, I don't, I know you didn't say right or wrong about it. Um, you just said, don't talk to yourself, but don't respond to yourself. Don't respond to yourself. It's a, yeah. little, <laughs> so, a little different. <laughs> okay. What about you, Blair? Just my accomplishments over the last five years mm -hmm. um something like you know and when i say this is, like i said it doesn't have to be something like hard or traumatic or extremely personal but something that like an obstacle that you you improved on you got through <laughs> you say that and i automatically gravitate to the hard the traumatic and the personal <laughs> <laughs> don't hit the tree um, don't hit the don't, tree but i'm doing it anyway into the tree. <laughs> um i mean i guess like the most um pertinent thing that i can that i think about when i think about like the last five years and you know i've brought this up before but just think thankful to God that, that I am not in the same place that I was a year ago, you know? Um, and all that just boils down to finally having the courage to make decisions that needed to be made and have those decisions and enforce respect on those decisions. That was always kind of the biggest thing because I felt like 
I had made similar decisions before, but didn't really put my foot down about them. And so they got trampled on, the boundaries got, you know, um, disrespected. So finally being able to build up enough self courage um, and resiliency to be able to say, this is what it is and you have to deal with it kind of thing. So that's the, that's the biggest one for me. Okay. All right. Those so who know, question. know what I'm talking about. And those who don't know can probably figure it out. <laughs> Period. <laughs> I want to give credit. Um, in, at least in these five years, I've become more comfortable with myself. Um, knowing more so of that, that idea of the imposter syndrome only exists because I was insecure about my gifts. And so being able to walk into a space and own it and just be myself. It doesn't matter who I, this is like, this goes back to the pharmacy conversation. Like I can walk into a space and really enjoy the fact that I know one of my gifts is I can help light up a room and not do it intentionally, but just make sure that everybody's good. Like that's just like how we said before, shout out to the one and the only Angela entire Bassett. You know, when she posts on social media and the first thing she says, you good. Like, I I love that so much more about myself where it's not me doing it to put up a front, to put up like a defense mechanism because I got shit going on and I want to make sure that everybody else is good so I don't have to ever talk about me. Um, and so I've, 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 I think I've made it very clear Um even speaking to some people I went to college with who started following me on social media and was like, I never knew you had such a personality. I'm like, well, that's because back then I didn't, I didn't know who I was, you know? And then even, even after college, you know, I really didn't know who I was when I, even when I first moved back here to New York, you know, I was trying to find a circle of gay men to, to be around. And, you know, every circle that I found myself in came with an altercation. So I removed myself from all circles um, and then now I just have a dot. Hey, Red. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, and and shout out to anybody else who actually considers myself their friend. I am your friend. Um, I'm not sure yet if you are mine. And 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 so it's so funny because you said, I'm going to get to you, Red, because I saw you put your finger up. But you said a word that is going to lead into the next question. And this is the reason why I'm saying that. So go ahead, Red. You was do you remember? Yeah, no, I was just gonna say, I don't know if it's so much the last five years, but I was. Uh, let's just use the last five years. I think another thing that I'm very happy that I'm doing now is I'm actually finding that I'm not trying to fit myself in a box, mm -hmm. and it's people use that term so loosely, but. The reason why I say loosely is because often we find ourselves in a box, in a box, in a box, if that makes sense. So I was just talking with a friend, a, a director, writer friend of mine, and I said the box was to conform and be like everybody else. And then as soon as I stopped doing that, I had a moment of relief. But then it was like, I'm doing my creativity, my art, my whatever my passion is going to be. And even that is in a box, right? Because you do it and you want people to like it. So then you're still trying to conform to a box that's outside of the smaller box that you just got out of. So it's always about expanding. If you're a real artist and you're 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 really creative and and it, and then this doesn't just apply to creativity. It could apply with anything. If you're a scientist, if you are a real scientist, you're a real artist, you're a real this, then you the 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 constraints of whatever your specialty is should not hold you back. You should be able to utilize them and wield them so that they're only they're 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 steps to for you to get higher and higher and bigger and bigger. And I think that's what I love about myself a lot. I don't care anymore. People spend so much time to, to worry about like whether or not they fit in. And I don't, I don't even care anymore. And to that extent where it, it doesn't even matter anymore that people 
talk to me and they're like, oh, you seem cool. Well, yeah, because I'm just sitting here minding my fucking business. Mm-hmm. That's, okay, exactly, anyway. that's exactly what I mean. Like, you know, I don't remember. I think I said this before about the other, the definition of actually what it means to be unbothered. Like everybody says, oh, I'm unbothered. I'm unbothered. But you really are because you're talking about it in such a way that like you give it attitude because you're unbothered. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I never get that. But like to actually be like, okay. <laughs> and wh- it, whether it does or whether it doesn't has no effect on what I'm going to do. Yeah. Whether you do or whether you don't has no effect on what I'm going to do. And, and I appreciate that in these years I've become, and maybe it's age, you know, I'm going to be. A lot of it comes with age. A lot of it comes with age. A lot of it comes with age, but there's a lot of people that are stuck. It don't matter what age they are. Um, well, it's age and the desire to grow. The age, desire to grow, the experience. Yeah, it's, it's all of that. But it's like, you know, I just, I just refuse. And it's so funny when people are so even at work, right? Like, and work is a totally different line of business and the way that I involve myself create creatively. But like, I watch people just like, sometimes just like get out of like control, get bell bent. And I'm like, why are you acting like that? Well, because I'm just all like, y'all, y'all are supplying way too much energy. I want to sit here, eat my lunch, laugh at stupidness, laugh at other people and then go home the end and some people can't some people can't let it go Mm -mm. Mm. okay so word that i wrote down oh no boundaries and that i i i the way blair's like oh god (laughs) (laughs) and you know it's something that as i mean we 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 learn our boundaries and we're actually like starting to are you let me ask you, are you starting to enforce your boundaries and how are you actually? Um, I feel like yes and no. I feel like I only need to make other people aware of and enforce boundaries if they've crossed them in some way. Like for the most part, like I don't really feel like I bring that up or establish them or it's not like I'm coming like right out the gate talking about these are my boundaries. Um, But more so if somebody does something that upsets me, essentially, then I'm like, okay, well now we have to have a conversation, you know? So like, it's interesting. Like, why is it that we wait for people to trigger our boundaries before we establish them? I am so glad that you 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 worded it like that i just had a conversation with somebody like two or three weeks ago about boundaries and about being direct versus being passive and i it's funny because a lot like you i am i guess i'm passive for the most part because i don't want i don't want it to interrupt anything that I'm doing to begin with right Mm -hmm. so like water it just flows around me like for the most part unless it unless it does something specifically that that will stop what I'm doing or obstruct my my routines then that's when I would address it but it was a whole big conversation about being direct versus being passive and he was like you're not direct you're passive I said well, no, I was like, when stuff is, it, it bothers me, when stuff is is now in the way or something happens directly, directly to me, then I directly address it. Mm-hmm. But for some people, they're so direct that they don't even let anything get to that point. Mm-hmm. So for me, I, I'm kind of like you. I'm just all like, if it don't, if it don't bother me, I'm just, you know, water off my back. Right. Some I think. People, yeah. The the first thing that just kind of comes to mind um, is, uh, and we've mentioned it before, PJ and I used to do a podcast about celibacy, and we had a whole episode about boundaries. And the thing, in that instance, it was important to identify and communicate what those boundaries were up front. Um, but that's because they were attached to a very specific reality you know I think like 
if it were the kind of case where it's like, there's something about me that I'm very firm on and I know what's going to happen if this thing that I'm very firm and passionate about is jeopardized. So let me know, let me let you know what the boundaries are concerning this particular thing. So that way we don't, we don't have to ever reach that point. That makes sense to me, but if it's more so like a, you know, if it's just casual vibes, I'm not trying to come in with the whole, this is this and that is that. And you know, you know what I mean? You know, I, 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 I'm so glad y'all said that because I think the important part about it um, is understanding the healthy balance between the two, right? Being able to be assertive without being aggressive. And I've, I know I've always challenged myself to be less aggressive and be more assertive, um, which has been met with, it's the honey versus the vinegar, right? So more assertive. That's in the second reference I've heard to that in the last two days. Oh, something, something needs to be learned. Not, not, not pertaining to me. <laughs> no, for, for, whoever, <laughs> for forever. Not pertaining whoever. to me. Other yeah. people have said, somebody said this to me. Somebody said, you know, the the honey fly vinegar reference. And now you're saying it. I'm like, huh, I wonder who else is going to say it to me now. But, you know, it's like, I've, I, and this is, and so, so kudos to you, uh, Red, for that, right? Because you are actually one of the few friends that I do have, both male and female, um, who actually actively, without being disrespectful, and I'm learning from you. And that's this is one of the things also that I appreciate about our friendship is how to say, hey, the fuck <laughs> without <laughs> without saying what the fuck, yo, <laughs> like, you know, what I mean, like the difference in it, but it's still it still comes off. It's still the these are my boundaries like, hey, that was fucked up. Just want to let you know we can talk about it or not, but I'm just letting you know that that was fucked up. You know, and his, his face. I'm just, I'm just laughing because all these conversations that I've had in the past three weeks have been in the same realm, and I, t I always give the same response. Like, it's like if you get that point, if you get to the point where I go, the fuck, that's like that's where that points, that's where that line is. Uh -huh. so it's just so funny that you, 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 you know me so well. Mm -hmm. Duh. No, let me I get let, let me get one of them pop things then please <laughs> no <laughs> um but okay so to keep the questions going right so and here's also the other thing about this guys so even though we're doing these questions for us i want you to actually think about asking yourself these questions you know they always talk about like what do you see yourself in five years right so like these are actually healthy questions to ask yourself um so in the spirit of where we're going the stickers that i had I think it would be best to start here. And then the last thing we'll bring up is what I what I have. So this is here is, of course, you can't see it. Can you read it? Yes. You want to read it? No, no, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Ooh. There we go. These are the two better nails. I don't want Chris to be like. Stop it. <laughs> no, because you know he is. He's like, nigga, clean your nail. I just got home. <laughs> Remember, ladies, never, never. Oh, so it's never the let, two picky. Never it's let a picky. man with dirty fingernails. Yeah, it's just, the show. it's just this one. Because <laughs> I was literally, anyway. <laughs> so this says, uh, speaking you of. Keep, but are you wanting us to read it or not? <laughs> oh. Oh, Lord, this is terrible. No, just read it. Please. Just, you you just, go just, for just it. Go it. for it. Go for it. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, listeners. PJ would, he as he's talking, he puts the post a note in the camera and then takes it down after a millisecond and then puts it back up and then takes it down and then puts it up. I don't know if he's expecting us to read it letter by letter or I what. But he's he's going to read what's on the post-it now. All right. So what's on the post-it now says, speaking of requirements, um, what what would you say you have learned are your requirements of others when it comes to you? I require that people are kind to me. I have so many. 
Right? Like I just, I just thought about it. I was like, "This is why I keep my circle small." PJ was going through, a, or a Red was going through a whole list in his head. <laughs> it literally was like, <laughs> and then they throw the scroll down the hall. Go ahead. I, I think the the, the 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 first thing that comes to mind is for you to is for you to understand, like like time like time like just respect for time i don't and and i guess the best way to describe that is i've had within the past 5 years i've had a lot of people who don't get that people are busy and 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 mm. things arise like but you could you could still make relationships and friendships work it's just that you have to be mindful of that I, there's nothing worse than having somebody that like I think is really cool and then they're mad at me because like I'm I'm juggling eight million and one different things. Like you don't ever see Eric, you don't ever see Chris, you don't ever see Mark, you don't see any you you don't ever see PJ, you don't see Blair ever turning around and, and being like, you just a fucked up friend because you don't hang out. Like we're all no like I don't mm -hmm. I think that's just like weird to me. And I don't know why that's bothered me so much recently but i'm like you can't be like that i'm I'm. we're all busy doing stuff we're all being adults and i think that comes i think that comes from like you actually like stepping into your own and that's all of us right stepping into your own time and knowing that you have a limited amount of time throughout the day to get whatever i need to get done and i it's not that i don't care about you it's not that you're not you know important it's not that you're not, i'm i'm not your friend it's maybe that you're just not mine, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. ah! but and I'm and I'm, I'm gonna keep saying this, but it's it's not in a, an offensive and this and FYI, guys, I'm not. This is not a triggering conversation about anything that's really going on. So just don't don't do that. Um, but what it really is is like self reflection, like understanding that hey, you, uh, I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't, I don't understand why you don't you don't understand that I have you know time. <laughs> Like, like none of, like none of my close, none of my close people do that. Mm -hmm. And I just, and I think that's, I think that's further proof that like, I'm not crazy in saying that because people will say stuff like, well, you make time for the stuff that you want. And I'm just all like, I don't, well, or now like, I don't want you. statements like, are, 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 <laughs> are things worth fighting for? Like, you shouldn't have to fight. Like, it's not, it doesn't have to be a fight. Like, it, like all my happen. life. I, I have to fight. fight. And, then, and, and what I refuse to do now is fight. Um, so if I if something has to be gone, something has to be gone, and this is not directed towards anyone or anything, but this is just an example. And and just and I'm just picking piggybacking off of like what Blair said as well. Um, she said for someone to be nice to her or kind to her, I, I would say that, but I think to a larger degree, what matters to me is if you're nice and kind to other people. If I mm -hmm. see you, if I see you mistreating people, you are not my friend. Mm -hmm. You are not my friend because you don't know that person's circumstance or what's going on. I'm not talking about like a joke or whatever. I'm talking about abuse, abuse. But also a joke, like what comes off as a joke is like rooted in some stuff too. Like yeah. I have, Absolutely. I have a friend who has been a very close friend of mine for a long time, but I'm really starting to notice a lot of, insecurities that she has that are that come out and they come out as like, it comes know. out as attacks on other people mm -hmm. but like they like justified as they're attacking them mm. what's yeah, going on it, here yeah no like it, it could definitely be spawn it spawns from a a place of that that's not that doesn't have really good intentions right um but i think that takes that also takes a certain level of empathy to be able to see that. Like you, we all make jokes about each other and things and stuff like that. But we also know that we all have lines as well. Like I've seen it with you, PJ. I've seen it with you, Blair. I don't know if y'all have seen mine, but we we and we tend to back off. Like okay, you're, you ain't playing today. We gonna leave you alone. Yeah, it comes with touching your things. I'm I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> I still want one of those pop things. As long as you know. <laughs> 
But wait, so since you talk about that, it's so funny because guess what? Look, we we are all the same page. I'm gonna let y'all read it this time, but this is what I have. <laughs> all right, he's holding it there this we time. We actually were able to read it this time. He held it up for three seconds. <laughs> so what I what what I what I require from people is for them to know that, and this is why, you know, again, we're friends, right? I I do not hold do things or ha- say anything out of malice for anyone. You know, period. Now I know I know that things can be taken out of context or be said, and that's for me to work, continue to work on when it comes to tone and texture and how things are coming off and time and place when to say things. Um, but when I when I say like this is what I require from people, like to know that I'm not your enemy, you know. Mm-hmm. Even if you have done me wrong, I'm not your enemy. You know why? Because you've done me wrong. I've forgiven you for doing me wrong. And I've learned from that mistake. Therefore, I will keep you in this box, depending on where it will be. Again, maybe I'm your friend, but maybe again, you're not my friend. Because I've realized these little itty bitty things. And boom, there we are. There you are. All the way over there. So sorry. How do, how do you feel in those notes these seats? You know, so I, I've learned to understand that, especially within these past couple of years about myself in all different aspects. Like not even just, like I said, not even just this podcast. You know, I make these jokes about you unmelanated, unmelanated unseasoned people, but I love you guys. Um, I love humans, you know, so, and we do have a, uh, a uh, core uh caucasian see i wasn't even gonna say anything funny but we do have a caucasian on audience um and i appreciate you guys for listening we all do you know that's why blair always says stop (laughs) (laughs) you're gonna run them away you're gonna (laughs) i never want to i never want to because i appreciate everybody who actually tunes into anything that we say we appreciate people it's been five years since we um started this and who knew that we would even have people who want to listen um, in all different states, different countries. Um, so grateful for all of every last one of you, whether you listen for five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, or the whole episode. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, the last question, since we do have a hard stop. And so this is going to be a little bit more, uh, I'm a little bit more lighthearted. And so the question I have, and you can pick whichever direction you want to go. And since we've been doing this for five years, we've gotten older. We've talked about how when you age, the question is what they don't tell you about. So it could be, right? So let's say they don't tell you about X, Y, and Z about relationships. They don't tell you this about um, going to work or you know whatever it is that they don't tell you about and you learned on your own as you've gotten older. Okay, I'm gonna, I have two answers. The first one is a spin on your question. So what what they do tell you about, but you don't believe until uh-huh. you experience is that your body will crickety crack and crumble in ways that you never thought possible. I was walking the other day and my knee just kept popping. It was popping every step. And I was like, they told me this would happen and I didn't believe them. I didn't think it was possible. So there's that. Now to actually answer your question, um, what they don't tell you, personally for me, what they don't tell you that I have come to find out on my own is that I truly value my space. I truly value the sanctity of my personal space. And I don't think that that's something that people really, again, it's like the boundary thing. Like people don't really talk to you about it until it's violated. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I would I would like to say that that's something that we should talk about more. Your personal space is important. Your sanctuary that you set up for yourself is important whether that be your your home your car like whatever it is wherever you feel settled and safe that's important damn that was really good i don't 
You want me to go so you could think? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I have something yet. Uh, okay, so I'll say what they don't tell you if you want to say it. So, so <laughs> joking one and the serious one. What they don't tell you is that as you get older, hot stuff doesn't do the same for your stomach as it used to. Okay, uh, oh. spicy spices um, yeah, are not up. your friend, <laughs> um, and they are not your. Um, they are not your friend. They're not your enemy, but they're just not a confidant. Okay, you I, I would not recommend eating out in eating spicy things. I would recommend being at home so you can be close to your uh, facilities. Yeah, should that be they, necessary? Because no you don't one here cut out like that. Because that, Blair that's is telling my bad. story right now. <laughs> that's all bad. Nobody, everybody knows that I do not poop in public spaces sometimes, and baby, <laughs> look, and you don't want to have to. You don't want to have to. You don't want to not have a choice. Okay, um, but on a serious note, um, what they don't tell you. And what they didn't tell me um, was exactly that, like how much loving my, what my peace really means. Like they don't tell you that you don't have to go out every night. You don't have to be a part of everything. They don't oh. tell you that. They, they tell you that you're gonna miss out. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know why? Because this remote is right here. This computer is right here. That bed is right there. And so is that couch. Ciao. <laughs> and if I don't want to do it, I I get somebody else to do it. And be okay with that. And not ask later how did it go? Because I will not be there in person. And like Whitney, uh, she said, I will not be there in spirit either. <laughs> what did I hear today? I said, you better slap me on a penny and call me Abe because we ain't Lincoln. <laughs> 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 love that one all right what about you red we while we closing this out i i think i think i don't think i have a joking one but i think the thing that they really they don't tell you i know right me right <laughs> Is it me? um i think that they don't tell you what they don't tell you is that you don't have to you don't have to participate in libations Mm -hmm. that's a big culture mm -hmm. um both that's, in entertainment even in business that's that's you're that's out and you're like. networking that you have to have a drink or you have to smoke and um I'll, I'll i'll actually tell you a personal story that happened this weekend i had on sunday somebody a friend of mine had asked me to go out um, so I did, and they wanted to smoke, and I said I won't smoke that much because I was like I have work the next day, and I smoked too much, and then I was like not because not because I couldn't function, but I was just slow and sluggish, so I didn't go to the gym, I didn't do my normal routines, my entire day felt. Oh, uh, was this the post where you said um, I don't have to go to the gym, and you was like boom, boom, boom? <laughs> Those are excuses. Right, 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 right. Essentially, like that, that. That was that was an. Excuse. Uh, you're high. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. You should. I should have. I should have not either gotten high, or I should have been able to still tough it through. But I didn't. So I think uh, people don't tell you that you don't have to do anything. You can actually go to a club if you don't feel like drinking. You can just say, "I'll have the water." Clearly, let me tell you what to get. You, um, since I don't drink at all, you order yourself a uh, pineapple juice with tonic water and grenadine, and mix that shit up, and that is delicious. And you feel like you're part of the crowd. Come on, shout out to uh, the toast that uh, Jeeves used to give. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Holly Melanie Manor. <laughs> Speaking of Holly Melanie Manor, guys, thank you for taking the time to listen to another episode of Highly Melanated. Highly motherfucking melanated. Five years in Samuel, when you need him. Okay, the safe space where it is okay to actually ask yourself these questions and be honest with your answers. And that's actually kind of what we want you to do, guys. So after taking a listen to this episode, ask yourself some of these questions and be honest with yourself. So, yeah. That part. So on that note, guys, peace, love, and... Put it in your mouth. Why was I saying watermelon wow. in my head? <laughs> I was like, she won't do it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> you did. All right, y'all.
Yesterday my life was filled with rain Sunny You smiled at me and really eased the 